says two hats are better than one. I can't believe it! This is new! Dr. Rose! Slam, bam, jam! Hey, fans, there is nothing like the excitement of sports. And guess what? Hockey and more. Hey, and does it come? Is like nobody else. But it's unbelievable, baby. You can get a whole year of college sports for just eleven ninety-five. Can't believe it. There's no call now, and you also get my super. Plus your free Dick Vitale's College Basketball Yearbook. Brian plays the world. At the end of the game, the game's over. The players pick him up and say, I don't care about that, Ben, you know. That, those fancy clothes you're wearing, Dante, you're taking a bath here. Hey, he had his shoes off. You, you think he'd done this before. I don't know what's what's better or worse, a dunk in the pool or the ice-cold Gatorade. <laughs> All right, thanks very much for joining us on Prime. Stanford Cardinal, the NCAA champions for 1994 over USC. It was everything we expected and more. For Chris Dorst, I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks very much for joining us on Prime. The 1994 NCAA Men's Water Polo Championship was brought to you by Ice Draft from Budweiser. Ice Brew, cold filter, Ice Draft from Budweiser. Crack one open today. This has been a presentation of Bud Sports in association with Prime. the world. Live from Recreation Hall at Penn State University, Raycon presents Big Ten Basketball. Featuring the Vanderbilt Commodores of the Southeastern Conference, taking on the Penn State Nittany Lions of the Big Ten. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rec Hall on the campus of Penn State University, where today we have a very intriguing early December matchup between the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Vanderbilt Commodores. Both teams 2-0 coming into the game, and for the Commodores, it's been fairly easy. They've played great defense early on. For the Nittany Lions, a little tougher. A one-point road win at Duquesne on Wednesday. I'm Frank Gardenia, and working with me today, former Vanderbilt standout Barry Booker. And Barry, a new-look Vanderbilt team this year. They have some new faces. Yeah, they certainly do, Frank. Still some solid inside players, but gone is Billy McCaffrey, the All-American who led the team in scoring last season. And the, trying to replace that scoring load will be Ronnie McMahon, who is an excellent scorer. And if he can average 18 a game, he'll be Vanderbilt's all-time leading scorer. And on the other side, for Penn State, they're trying to improve upon that 13-14 record from last season, get into postseason play, and post a winning season this time around. And they will, of course, be led by Vanderbilt transfer John Amici, who has done a great job for them scoring the past three seasons and, and rebounding, and he'll be counted on very heavily. If you can get some uh, perimeter punch going for them, they're going to be tough. It's a big game for both teams, even though it is early in December, and a win today would be a nice one on their March resume. We'll be back with more and a look at the starting lineups after these messages.
making it to the pros takes a certain level of excellence. The experience to get the job done right and a reputation for quality. Having what you need on hand, putting the parts together for the best possible performance. Being in the pros takes a special brand of confidence, and for professionally trained technicians, that confidence is CarQuest. CarQuest, welcome to the pros. If someone said they wanted a car that was as quiet as a Mercedes, yet as practical as an Accord, that handled as well as a BMW, but was as economical as a Nissan Altima, and that somebody said they wanted all of this in one car, you'd say they had their head in the clouds. And you'd be right. The Cirrus, Chrysler's newest cab-forward car. It's not just a step above. It's the new plateau. Over the years, some pretty hungry folks have stopped by my place. <laughs> the Mega Meal from KFC is back. I like Mega Meal. Your choice of chicken, a ton of side dishes, even a whole pie, just $14.99. And this week, get a Wile E. Coyote mug. <laughs> Must be his mug shot. Just $1.99 with every Mega Meal. Collect all four. The Mega Meal from KFC. Enough food to feed your whole family. <laughs> or one Tasmanian devil. You can use a bat and a glove, a skate and a stick, a club and a putter, or a racket and a net. You can play with big orange balls, small hard balls, fuzzy bouncy balls, tiny dimpled balls, pointy brown balls, or no balls at all. You can move on rubber soles, or rubber spikes, or rubber wheels. You can compete with the best, and you can win. And when you want to see it all, you can watch Sports Channel. 24 hours of the best sports from the region and the world. Sports Channel. Use it for all the sports in your life. Today's starting lineups are brought to you by your Tennessee, Kentucky gold medal Chevy dealers. And Barry, as we look at the lineups, there are some intriguing matchups, especially a couple of the guard matchups, particularly Danny Earl and Ronnie McMahon. Yeah, Penn State's guards are going to have to handle the Vanderbilt defensive pressure and get the ball inside to John Amici, where he could really cause some foul trouble for the Commodores. Also for the Commodores, a new face in the starting lineup in forward packs Whitehead because of an injury situation. Yeah, Brian Milburn has a sprained foot, and he will probably not play at all today, so the other guys are going to have to pick it up on the boards. It should be an excellent game, an interesting intersectional matchup between Vanderbilt and Penn State. We'll have the tip-off coming up in just a few moments. Christmas shopping can be stressful. Try it when you're eight! <laughs> but at your local True Value, we make it easy. Even for a kid, with lots of great gifts. And at prices that won't break the old piggy bank. Like this 43-piece quarter-inch tool kit for just $8.77. Or this 20-inch toolbox with lift-out tray just $6.99. And parking! It's a piece of cake. True Value. Gifts are just around the corner. This is no accident, and neither is this. Insurance fraud involves everything from staged accidents to arson to false medical claims, and it cost policyholders and their companies $18 billion last year. State Farm has long been a leader in the fight against fraud, and now we're working even closer with law enforcement agencies to help prosecute these criminals, because when they get away with fraud, everyone pays. Vanderbilt wants to play an up-tempo style, force turnovers, get in transition. But this is a tough environment to play in, a very hostile crowd. It's going to be quite difficult for them to deal with that in their first road game. For the Nittany Lions, the keys really come uh, with the perimeter. They would like to have production growth from a scoring and defensive standpoint from their guards. That's right. Vanderbilt counts heavily on their backcourt players to do a bulk of the scoring. So Penn State can cut down on that and handle the pressure defensively, get them their own offense. They're going to be effective today. All right, here we go. The officials are Ted Hillary, Dan Kristen, and Phil Volva, and the Commodores control the tap. They go quickly inside, down low to Woods, and the shot is good. Big basket by Chris Woods, going strong to the basket. He hasn't been scoring particularly well this year, but that's a, a good sign for the doors. Earl works it up for Penn State. This is Danny Earl, a sophomore out of South Jersey. 
Outstanding freshman in the Big Ten a year ago. Rashawn Carlton. Carlton has a, an injury problem, uh, an arch that's been giving him, giving him some trouble, so he's in the starting lineup today so that he can uh, stay loose after going through the warm-up. Pax Whitehead starting for Vanderbilt today after the injury to Milgram. Mac Mahan with his first shot of the game, won't go. Donovan Williams with a rebound. And stay looking to run. Williams with the penetration and draws the foul. Great job by Donovan Williams, taking that basketball strong to the basket. No one stopped him, so he goes all the way and draws the foul. The foul will be on Chris Woods. That's the first on either team. And here's Williams to the charity stripe. Williams has had just one free throw attempt this year. He has been bothered by injuries throughout his career, and he is playing today with a bruised hand. Hey, Frank, you mentioned his injury troubles. Donovan Williams, this is only the 30, 41st of 86 games in his career that he has played in. He's missed over half of them. Second shot is short. And for Donovan, if you can hurt it, he has. He has really been hurt throughout his career. He has stayed in there and is hopeful of having a healthy senior season. Commodore is leading 2-1. to one. This is Whitehead against Carlton. And we have a foul, I believe, on Amici. Strong move by Pax Whitehead with a, a great drive to the basket going to his left. Penn State has had a bit of a problem containing people on penetration. There's a look at Bruce Parkhill, who has been here 12 years and uh, been a very popular head coach here in State College. He is a native of State College, Pennsylvania, played his high school basketball here. That doesn't happen very often that you coach collegiately in your hometown. Yeah, that's a great situation for him to be able to stay close to home and uh, be a part of this environment that he grew up that was such a big part of his life and his youth. Whitehead, as you see there, was in the Ivy League two years ago, transferred with Coach Van Bredekoff from Cornell, and he gives the Commodores a 3-1 to one lead. It's a Meiji against some pressure. Penn State is effective in handling this pressure. It's going to be a big boost for him. Vanderbilt has forced 27 turnovers per game in the first two this year. Secunda from the perimeter off the glass. Lynn Secunda, the transfer from Syracuse in his first bucket, and we are tied at three. Secunda, a really solid player. He brings to Penn State another quality body inside. This sucker. Lota Woods again, and he scores. Chris Woods only averages five per game, but he's already got four here in the early going. Great interior passing. Pax Whitehead got in trouble, but he was able to find Woods for the easy one. Which took only 11 shots in the Commodores' first two games this year. Donovan Williams, no call. He'll shoot and hit. Strong start for Donovan Williams so far this afternoon with three points already. He's doing a good job. Williams did not play much at the Kane on Wednesday, and now we have a foul away from the ball on Woods. This could be a problem for Vanderbilt. That's the second foul on Chris Woods already. We're only just a little more than two minutes into the game. So he'll probably have to come out. We are tied at 5, 17.48 left to play here in the first half. J.J. Lucas is up and will check in soon for Vanderbilt. So far, the Penn State guards have been turnover free. A great sign for Penn State. This is Williams again creating and scoring. Ronda Williams is feeling it this afternoon. He is also a fast start. Whitehead quickly down for Vanderbilt, missing, follows and scores. So quickly we are tied at seven. And Barry, does the tempo favor Vanderbilt here early? I think it does. Uh, getting in this transition game a little bit, but if Penn State doesn't turn the ball over, it doesn't matter what tempo you play. Just get good shots. This is a Meiji. Download a Secunda, a little too tough to handle, but Secunda chases it down. And on the drive, Secunda scores. Four points for Secunda, Penn State nine. Vanderbilt 7. Well, we're seeing a lot of scoring so far. Neither team doing a good job on the defensive end. Malik Evans on the wing. We have a foul inside away from the ball. That will be on Carlton. 
J.J. Lucas checks in, replacing Chris Woods. He has to leave with the two fouls. And that could be a problem for Vanderbilt. There's not a lot of depth for Vanderbilt due to some injuries. This is McMahon slicing through traffic and nice off the glass. Ronnie McMahon's first bucket of the night. He has averaged over 17 a game the first two games. Really hasn't gotten into a, a, a great rhythm early. It's been uh, easy wins for the Commodores thus far. Amici spinning with the left hand, no good. Secunda to follow. Great job by Glenn Secunda hitting the glass. Van Boon has uh, not done a very good job rebounding so far this year. Actually out rebounded by Sanford. And uh, Penn State taking advantage of that and the crowd getting into it. Six points for Secunda, Penn State by two. We're talking about Vanderbilt's first couple of games, Barry. When you win big, your starters don't get as much playing time as they might, might like. And the foul again inside. And I think this one's on Secunda. I think both these coaches expect a tight one here from start to finish today. I think it really should be. And uh, that probably favors Penn State being at home with their crowd on their side. So the Nittany Lions lead it by two. Both teams go to the huddle, and we will be back with more in a few moments. Gillette introduces the next revolution in shaving closeness. Microfins. And they're only on the new Sensor XL. These microfins precede the blades. As Sensor XL's spring-mounted blades adjust to your face, these soft, flexible fins gently stretch your skin so your beard stands up for the closest, most comfortable shave. Get closer than ever before. Get the new Gillette Sensor XL. My dad's a doctor, and you have to be real smart to be a doctor. Well, my dad fixes cars, and he's a lot smarter than your dad. Because a doctor only has two models to fix, men and women, and they never change. My dad has to know how to fix hundreds of car models, and they change every year. Well, my dad helps your dad keep your dad's car running right, and that's his door. CarQuest, preferred by professional automotive technicians. Look to be well on their way to a leak. If you have rust in your water, you could end up with clogged pipes, which could lead to bigger problems. Don't wait for rust to strike. Use Diamond Crystal Red Out, the water softener salt pellets that remove rust from your water. <laughs> Red out pellets from Diamond Crystal, because a little rust can do a lot of damage. Welcome back to Rec Hall, and we are on a sizzling shooting pace here early with Penn State leading by two. The Nittany Lions have hit five of their first seven shots from the floor. Vanderbilt has hit four of their first six. And Barry, it's been the instant offense here in the early going. Yeah, it certainly has been, and uh, no turnovers for Penn State so far. Let's see what Jan Van Bredikoff had to say about that. Coming if we can pressure game. the ball as we have done the first two games, try to cause some turnovers and take them out of the rhythm of the game. We have not allowed a team to run their offense in, in all four games, counting our two exhibition games, because we put a lot of pressure on the ball, and we're going to try to do that and not let them get into half-court sets where they go inside of John Amici. And thus far, neither team, I think, has done what they want to do defensively early, and it has not been very half-court oriented has been played at a fairly rapid pace. That's right, and probably an up-tempo pace if uh, Penn State's not turning the ball over is in their favor because that keeps the crowd in the game. Howard Pride is in now for the Commodores. The sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama, and the shot is up and short. Secunda with a rebound. Tough shot, off-balance shot by Ronnie McMahon that time. Earl to Carlton. Carlton working on Pride out to Amechi. Amechi will shoot from there, and he's got it. When Amechi came to Penn State, he came as an excellent perimeter shooter for a big guy. He got away from that last year, but he still has that in his repertoire. Yeah, John uh, is a good perimeter shooter, and uh, that will extend the, the Vanderbilt defense if he's able to knock that down. This is Secker, who has yet to take a shot. The McMahon, who lets it go. Secunda again clears the board. State done a real nice job on the glass, limiting Vanderbilt to one shot. Amici down low, and he'll follow, and he is fouled, and it counts. Great job by John Amici getting the ball in great position.
Amici down low, and J.J. Lucas could do nothing about it. Amici does a great job of getting to the foul line. Look at how close he is to the basket, goes and gets it, and he draws fouls on people. That is the third foul that he's drawn on the Vanderbilt center. Amici to the free throw line. He had his 19th career double-double at Duquesne on Wednesday, and he makes it the old-fashioned three-point play. Five points here early for Amici. Penn State by seven. Let's see if Vanderbilt can settle down and get some good shots. This is Pride against Williams. In some trouble, and Williams takes it away. First comes a three on two. Earl on the drive. And Lucas clears it away. Backhand got away with a hack on, on Donovan. I believe, to the Commodore. You notice that Vanderbilt has uh, shaved heads. All the players shaved their heads before the first exhibition game as a show of unity. And uh, they all went through with it. And um, I think it's it's important to be unified in November, but you really want to be no unified in March when it counts. There's Lucas shooting. Nice soft touch by the big freshman, J.J. Lucas, his first bucket. 16 to 11, Penn State by five. And back to the team unity, it won't show up in uh, bickering by the Commodores, but it will show up in shot selection. If you see a lot of bad shots, I think that's what they're talking about with that team unity. Secunda from the outside missing, Secker with the rebound. Penn State, not a very good perimeter shooting team, shooting only 29% coming into the game from three-point range. But Secker's first shot, he missed and chases it down. Lucas will shoot from the top of the circle. And he scores. A long two-pointer by J.J. Lucas. So Lucas with four quick points off the bench. That may be a three. But they indicate it's just a two. It was a two, and the official uh, asking Malik Evans to tuck his shirt tail in. Pete Lasicki now, a freshman for Penn State, checking into the lineup. Lasicki, a tremendous outside shooter. Lasicki, a 6'4 native of Whitehall, Pennsylvania, over in the Lehigh Valley area. Billy McCaffrey country. That's exactly right. A lot of good basketball players have come from that area. And an offensive foul on Danny Earl. Great job by Frank Secker, stepping in front of Earl, cutting him off. And Earl kind of threw a, a little elbow out there at Secker. Secker, a nice acting job to draw the foul. Really not a lot of contact there. But Secker with a big flop gets the call. Vanderbilt now can tie it or cut it to one. Penn State leading 16-13. Amici has to come out on Lucas. Fry trying to dish it inside. It's kicked out of bounds, and it will go to the Nittany Lions. Howard Pride uh, not making real good decisions to this point. He's had a, a couple of uh, dangerous passes. And uh, he, he really hasn't played a whole lot coming into this game, but because of the injuries, he's been pressed into action. Earl to Lasicki, the freshman's first shot of the game. They've been out. Rebound down to Despaltro, who's in the game. Billy Despaltro, the freshman from New Jersey, checking in. Another player who hasn't seen a lot of time this year, Despaltro. And down low quickly, Lucas gets away from Amici, and he has come off the bench and scored six quick points. Penn State leading by one, 16-15. Earl against the double team to Carlton. Now the defensive pressure picking up. Vanderbilt trying to trap a little more. There's Carlton from the baseline scoring. And that's what happens when you don't get turnovers and you try to trap. You leave some people open. A very easy shot for Carlton along the baseline. That's the first bucket for Carlton. Penn State by three. It's ball throw to Lucas. Lucas double team back out to the ball throw. Lucas is a good score down low for Vanderbilt. This is Pride against Earl, and we have a foul, a whistle away from the ball. And a foul away from the ball, I believe, on Pride. So with 11.58 to play Vanderbilt doing a great job moving the basketball, and J.J. Lucas coming up with an easy one as Vanderbilt trails right now at Penn State by three. If it runs, if it swings, if it jams, 
If it skates, if it spikes, if it slides, if it accelerates, if it hits, and hits, and hits, if it birdies, if it receives, if it kicks, if it serves, if it competes, if it scores, and scores, and scores, and scores, and scores, then it must be Sports Channel. 24 hours of the best sports from the region and the world. If it's sports, then it must be Sports Channel. I can't believe it! This is new, Dr. Rose! Slam, bam, jam! Hey, fans, there is nothing like the excitement of college sports. And guess what? Now you can get a hot new magazine that's nothing but college sports. Every issue brings you the inside story on football, baseball, hockey, and more. Hey, and does it cover college hoops? Are you serious? Like nobody else. But it's unbelievable, baby. You can get a whole year of college sports for just $11.95. Can you believe it? There's more. Call now, and you also get my super sensational college basketball yearbook free. You'll get all the facts, the stats, plus my scintillating predictions. This deal is awesome, baby. Call now. Call 1-800-453-5600 now for 12 great issues of college sports, plus your free Dick Vitale's College Basketball Yearbook. There's a good shot of the freshman J.J. Lucas, and Barry, he has come on and provided some instant offense for Vanderbilt. He certainly has. Done a great job scoring down low, and uh, with J.J., thank goodness the hair grows back. That look is just not quite him. <laughs> I tell you, when he comes into the game, he has, uh, he looks to score. He's taken better than 10 shots a game in, in each of the first two games thus far. Yeah, I think his teammates have an awful lot of confidence in him. Throwing him the basketball inside, he's a solid player. There's J.J. Lucas. Penn State has won 36 of their last 37 non-conference home games. And they have a dandy on their hands with Vanderbilt here today. Penn State leading 18-15 and facing Vanderbilt pressure. This is Secunda up to Lasicki, and it's a little too strong. It's turned over to the Commodores. That's the second turnover of the game for the Nittany Lions. They've done a nice job handling the pressure so far. Uh, Vanderbilt seems to be turning it up a notch here in the last few minutes. And Penn State's going to have to handle that all day. This is Howard Pride against Danny Earl. The freshman to Spalter. Spalter has had a tough time adjusting to the Vanderbilt system, trying to learn exactly what to do in each situation. Nice look by Lucas inside, the bucket by Despaltro, and excellent post passing that time by J.J. Lucas. Yeah, J.J. Uh, can rebound, can pass, can score, and Billy Despaltro can do that. He can put the basketball in the hole. Now, Lucas getting a double team, Secunda takes a peek, and Despaltro puts it down. He um, is an excellent player, has a lot of ability. They call him Hercules on the team because of that body. And he hits, makes it a three-point play, so it's a tie game at 18. The foul was on Michael Joseph. And this is Joseph with the ball. Joseph to Danny Earl. And we have a whistle, and then we have something wrong with the shot clock. Here it was not running. They're going to take seven seconds off the clock. There's official Ted Hillary explaining the situation. Working okay. A little shot clock malfunction as uh, Penn State tries to pass the ball up against the pressure defense. Most teams, uh, Vanderbilt's basically playing a man-to-man -man press. Most teams will try and get it to the point guard and then clear out and just let him handle the pressure. Penn State approaching it a little differently. Penn State in its first two games this year, shooting 45.2% from the floor. They have hit eight of their first 14 shots here today. Masicki down to Secunda. Secunda in traffic scores. That was not easy, and he has eight points. Great pass by Lasicki. He's in trouble falling out of bounds over there in the corner, but comes up with a saving pass. Yeah, we are seeing some freshmen today who have great instincts. Lasicki of Penn State, Lucas of Vanderbilt, they know how to play the game. And yeah. Lasicki is guarding McMahon right now. Really smart basketball players. And McMahon scoring over Lasicki has four points. And the Commodores lead it 21-20. Good defense by Lasicki. The hand in the face there. 
Greg Bartram now checking in for the Little Lions, replacing Rashawn Carlton. 10.47 to play in the first half. Pride will leave for Vanderbilt. Both teams using a lot of players here early. Mechie returning for the Nittany Lions. He'll replace Joseph. Penn State trailing by one. Burrell against Secker. Secker averaging seven steals per game early this year. Pass going through the hands of Bartram out of bounds. Turned over to the Commodore. And Evans now returning for Vanderbilt. Penn State uh, having a little problem taking care of the basketball here lately. Secker over to Whitehead. The Commodores lead by one. After Lucas. Whitehead on the move. Evans couldn't hang on. Bartram comes away with it. Another difficult off-balance shot by Pax Whitehead. They look for Amechi and they find him. Amechi now against Lucas with a left hand. Won't go. Nice strong move by Amechi. Whitehead on the run. And it was stripped away, but they call it travel on Pax Whitehead. And that's, that's the sixth turnover for the Commodore to this point. So they're having a little problem, problem handling the basketball as well. This is Earl on the move, had it knocked away from behind. Secker comes up with it, great play, and then Secunda chases it down. Getting a little sloppy here. Bartram open from the corner, and he's got it. That's a three for Greg Bartram. Nice job by Secunda to recognize the open man, and Bartram knocking down that jumper from the corner. Bartram, a senior out of Chapmanville, West Virginia, gives Penn State a two-point lead. Lucas comes away with the ball for Vanderbilt. This is Mac Mahan over the freshman Lasicki, and Lasicki hammers him. There'll be a three-shot foul on Lasicki, sending Mac Mahan to the line. As Vanderbilt continues to take difficult shots, they're not moving the basketball very well at all. Mac Mahan with Lasicki all over him, tries to shoot this pull-up jumper. And uh, Lasicki bails him out by fouling him on an off-balance three-point jump shot. Barry, one of the things Coach Van Bredikoff talked about this year is he felt this team might have a little more balanced scoring than they had last year and might be a better defensive team than last year's team. Has that been the case early? Uh, I think so. They're, uh, they're certainly not looking to one guy the way they did last year with uh, Billy McCaffrey. There are quite a few guys out there who can score for the Commodores, but they need to play together a little bit more, need to move the basketball, find the open man, and work a little more together. McMahon gets the second one. Well, they have seven players that average five or more points early and, and three averaging double figures here early in the year. That's pretty good balance. It is, and then a couple of blowouts also. That uh, that makes a difference as well in, uh, in the point distribution. McMahon hits the last two, and we are tied. Phil Williams is in now for Penn State at a power forward position, and Damian McKnight, a freshman guard, has also checked in. This is Bartram bringing it across the timeline. And throwing to Lasicki. Penn State using the skip pass to handle that pressure defense. Mechie looking to work on Chris Woods who has two fouls and we have a traveling against Greg Bartram. 8.58 to play first half. We are tied at 23. Uh, Pax Whitehead just limped to the bench for Vanderbilt. and uh, He's grabbing at an ankle along the sideline. So... Uh, could be another injury problem for the Commodores when Leak Evans just uh, checked in. These two teams are a little banged up, and they have several players playing today with some bumps and bruises. Bill Williams, bone spurs, and in, in an ankle, which would give him trouble with his conditioning. And I think this is on Woods, away from the ball, and that would be his third. Chris Woods has been foul prone. So far this season, he fouled out of one of the exhibition games in uh, just 10 minutes of action. So he has had a problem with that to this point. Well, Chris Woods scored four points early. 
but he will have to sit with some foul problems. This is a long one to Losicki on the drive. And the Nittany Lions regain the lead. Great job by Penn State going long against the pressure defense by Vanderbilt. Uh, Lasicki caught the freshman Drew Maddox sleeping, and they threw over the top for an easy one. Evans had it blocked by Joseph, and a foul on Vanderbilt. Great D by Joseph, going up, getting his hands on the basketball. He's got to take a seat, and uh, a Mechie will replace him. Five five, fellas. Five Penn five, State will be in the bonus from this point on. Malik Evans with his first foul. The Nittany Lions with the ball and a two-point lead. Excellent intersectional matchup here today between Vanderbilt and Penn State. The third meeting in the series between the two schools. Vanderbilt leads the series 2-0. This is Bartram. He'll shoot it and hit it. Well, I don't think he wanted to. He looked for the pass, looked left, looked right. Finally said, hey, I'll, I'll take the shot and I'll draw the foul. Great job by Greg Bartram. Kind of lulled them to sleep, looking for somewhere to go, and he sees the basket and goes to the hole. McMahon hit him with a body, and Bartram ends up at the line. Bartram with five points. This is his first free throw attempt of the year. And he nails it. 28-23, Penn State by five. So Bartram off the bench with six points here in the first half. He only scored three in 19 minutes against Duquesne on Wednesday. Maddox into the game now for Vanderbilt over to Evans. Evans driving on Williams. Partially blocked, I believe, by Amechi. Great help by Amechi coming over. Uh, Phil Williams unable to keep, keep up with Evans, but Amechi helps him out. There's Amechi with a finger roll that won't go down. And Maddox comes away with it. Amechi probably got fouled on that play, but it's not called. Got J.J. Lucas in the air. Evans with a three. Amechi to clear. You know this again, one pass and a shot for Vanderbilt, not moving the ball around very well at all. With this lead of the game for the Nittany Lions at five. The sicky to Phil Williams. They call him the big house, and he goes up strong and misses. Nice move by Phil Williams going to the basket, just can't get it down. There's McMahon shooting, and he can't hit. And they cheat to McKnight. The sicky with a quick shot. It's out of bounds to Penn State. Well, the boys aren't bashful today. They're putting it in the air in a hurry. 7.05 to play in the first half. Penn State leading it by five. We'll be back in a moment. The new Chrysler Cirrus has an advanced 24-valve V6. Its cab-forward design conveniently provides room for five and a vast array of new technology. It has dual airbags and advanced rail-through construction for superior handling and quietness. Chrysler Cirrus. While its name is derived from the heavens, one of the best reasons to own one is very down-to-earth. Chrysler Cirrus. It's not just a step above. It's the new plateau. A lot of what I do goes on behind the scenes. You know, most people aren't exactly on a first-name basis with their State Farm Claim representative. They know their agent, but they probably don't know that their agent has a partner, that we're a team, that we've worked on hundreds of claims together. But people take notice when a claim is handled promptly, and you won't get too many complaints if you just treat them fair, because that's when people appreciate what we do and who they're insured with. It might surprise you that a lot of folks do their holiday shopping at True Value. You see, we've got just what you need to wrap up a happy holiday. Still, some people just can't wait to get to those big discount stores. And wait. And wait. Well, now at True Value, this Rubbermaid bird feeder is just $7.77. And this True Tone telephone is just $9.97. So, why wait? True Value. Gifts are just around the corner. This telecast is presented by the authority of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated and is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated is prohibited. There's a look at the shooting numbers. Penn State a very good start here in the first half, Barry. 
Yeah, both teams shooting real well so far uh, for Vanderbilt. Ronnie McLean, the leading scorer, is only two for six, though, and John Amici for Penn State, only two for six. So the, the big names aren't getting it done to this point, but the other guys are stepping up. In the first two games for the Commodores this year, they averaged 19 steals per game. They did not have a steal here today in this one. No, they've protected the ball fairly well. Penn State has done a great job handling the defensive pressure. They're moving the basketball around well and finding good shots. Nice pass from Amici down to Phil Williams, and Williams is fouled. That's one of the things about John Amici. He has always been an excellent post passer. He certainly is. And, and he gets uh, uh, in a high-low situation with Phil Williams posted up. Williams seals Ronnie McMahon on his back, and it's a long way around the big house as he goes to the hole strong. So Williams will be at the free throw line. Phil is three of five this year. He's been averaging 20 minutes a game off the bench here in the first couple of games. And he hits the first one. It was not pretty, but it's effective. That's his first point. Penn State leads it by six. Coach Parkhill told me that uh, Phil Williams has uh, not been able to practice as much as he'd like because of the bone spurs in his ankle. And his conditioning has suffered because of that. And I expect him, if he does get healthy, to move into the starting lineup for Penn State. And the Lions lead it by seven. Vanderbilt's missed their last five shots from the floor. Whitehead working on Osiki to the small throw. McMahon against Bartram. This ball throw against Williams out to Lucas. Shot clock is inside 10. Good defensive stand by Penn State. Traveling on White Eddy. He kind of cut the ball and carried it there as he made his move. Yeah, a little undecisive coming off that screen and uh, just turned it over in his hand. The offense is kind of broken down and uh, Pax really turned it over and carried that one. This is McKnight, a freshman from Edison High School out of Miami, Florida, working against second. Knight to Bartram. Bartram comes and shoots and misses. Good shot for Bartram coming off that screen. Just uh, wasn't able to knock it in. This is Secker, who's had just one field goal attempt in the game. So Whitehead on the move. Nice speed to Lucas. Missed the shot. Nice pass that time from, from Whitehead to Lucas. He should have been in better position to make that shot when he caught it. McKnight with a miss, and Lucas clearing it away. Really a poor shot on that trip by Damian McKnight. And Secker fouled from behind by McKnight. That'll be the first on Penn State's freshman. Hey, you mentioned Frank Secker a second ago. Uh, Frank has not looked to uh, take his shot so far this afternoon. I think he's going to have to step up. He had a great all-around game the other night. Eight points, nine assists, six rebounds, and eight steals. That's about as complete as you can be. Frank is, uh, he seems to be able to put up the numbers almost at will. When he looks for his shots, he is uh, just a fabulous shooter. And uh, whenever Vanderbilt needs his scoring, usually he steps in and gets it done. Well, he had the 30 points against Villanova in the NIT final last year and really Shot the lights out in the garden. He gets both free throws. That's his first two of the game. 30 to 25, Penn State. And Vanderbilt just went about four minutes without scoring. Uh, the 9.22 mark was their last points before Secker hits those two free throws. The Mechie up high over to Lasicki. Lasicki will shoot on the move and hit. Beautiful job by Lasicki. Everyone knows he has that shooting range, so he threatens the three-point shot, puts it on the floor, and pulls up for a nice jumper. Four points for Lasicki, Penn State by seven. McMahon had it stripped by Bartram, it's still in play. Here comes McKnight on the run. Great hustle by the senior, Greg Bartram. Lasicki fires, and he's got the three. He catches, ready to shoot. Pete Lasicki can really stroke it, and he goes for the throat on that play, throwing that three-pointer in as Penn State goes up ten. Seven points for Lasicki off the bench. This is Whitehead. Not a good pass again. Amici comes up with it. Bartram created the steal. And here comes McKnight. Another turnover by the Commodores. That's supposed to be Penn State's trouble. Lasicki again. Oh. Pete is feeling it this afternoon. He's got the stroke down. And he's really got it going today. And a big grin on 
the, on the face of the freshman as he goes to the bench. And when you hit two straight threes, why not? Penn State leads it by 13 with 4.29 left to play the first half. We'll be back. If it runs, if it swings, if it jams, if it skates, if it spikes, if it slides, if it accelerates, if it hits and hits and hits, if it birdies, if it receives, if it kicks, if it serves, if it competes, if it scores and scores and scores and scores and scores. Fox Channel, 24 hours of the best sports from the region and the world. If it's sports, then it must be Sports Channel. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school with Dynamic Practice Organization, a revolutionary new instructional videotape. Dynamic Practice Organization features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky with his famous building block approach to athletic training. This exciting instructional videotape features the same drills, techniques, and methods that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Dynamic Practice Organization makes any coach look like a genius and organizes offensive and defensive practices that players of all ages and ability levels can't wait to attend. And immensely improves team communication skills and even conditioning. This is the instructional video that's a winner. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-282-5020. The Dynamic Practice Organization teaching video makes a great gift, too. Call now, 1-800-282-5020. Rec Hall is starting to rock here in Happy Valley, and Penn State with a 13-point lead. Excellent defensive help by Penn State senior Greg Bartram starts the fast break. Greg Bartram has done a lot of a lot of things well for Penn State. That hustle play is huge. And Pete Lasicki has gained confidence. He pulls up and hits a 15-footer, hits a three-pointer right at the three-point line, and then that one from NBA three-point range is a big basket for Penn State. Some guys, Barry, catch it with the gun cocked, and Lasicki is is one of those guys. He's ready to ready to let it fly as soon as he gets it. Very fundamentally sound player. He's ready to go when he gets it. You're right. Lasicki two for three on three pointers. He is now on the season seven for 14 on three pointers. Not bad for a freshman. Vanderbilt, as you can see, has had more problems handling the ball today than the Nittany Lions. We thought it might be the other way around. And this one is turned over. No, it's saved by Pride. Good hustle by Pride to come up with that. And they convert. J.J. Lucas out of the corner with a big basket to stop the bleeding a little bit for the Commodore. Penn State outscoring Vanderbilt 15-4 in this run. Penn State leading by 11, and we have a foul on Lucas. Yet another foul on uh, one of Vanderbilt's inside players. Uh, second foul on Lucas. Woods already on the bench with three fouls. Here's a Meche to the free throw line. He is 12 of 16 this year. They try to buy him a break or two throughout the course of the game. He averages better than 31 minutes per game. He hits the first shot here. They try to give him a blow every now and then just to keep him somewhat fresh, but they expect a lot of minutes from Big John. And Penn State counts on him so heavily to do so many things defensively and with his scoring. But they really need him on the court. With his both free throws, Penn State again by 13. Secker to Whitehead. And Whitehead is fouled by Phil Williams. Whitehead a little bit out of control that time coming down the lane, but Williams is unable to, to move over and get in front of him to draw that foul. I think Phil sees what's coming, but uh, with his inactivity, not being able to practice as much as he'd like, um, he's not able to be quick enough to get to that point to stop Whitehead. Here's Pax Whitehead. He had seven points against Tennessee Tech earlier in the week. Whitehead, a big, strong player. Uh, Vanderbilt searching for someone to score inside. They think maybe Pax Whitehead can be the answer at times, posting up some smaller players and going strong to the basket. Vanderbilt had a great start this year at the free throw line as a team shooting better than 82% from there. And Whitehead hits two, and he has five points in the game. Penn State by 11. Gets the pressure. This is Bartram in the backboard. He almost took an extra step. Good night. Now they get it across to Phil Williams. Now Penn 
State will take their time and set up their offense. Sakita Bartha out to Amechi, and we have a foul on Fry, who was holding Lasicki away from the ball. And Howard Pride picks up a cheap one there. Lasicki trying to cut to the basket. I know Pride is uh, very conscious of Lasicki after that binge he went on a few minutes ago, hitting those two big threes. Lasicki now to the free throw line. He hit a game-winning free throw with three seconds left on Wednesday night to help Penn State beat Duquesne. Excellent freshman, uh, great knowledge of the game, really knows what he's doing out there, averaging 14 points a game so far this season. Second leading scorer for Penn State. He's come off the bench to contribute 11 points in the first half. He had 15 points in 26 minutes on Wednesday. And he was seven for eight at the free throw line in that game. And his second shot is good, he's got them both. State by 13 again. And 42 points already in the first half was still better than three minutes to play. That's uh, too many points given up by the Vanderbilt defense. This is Whitehead over the second. Evans, Pride, he lets the long one go, and it's good. Wow. Surprised to see Penn State play his own defense against Vanderbilt, an excellent three-point shooting team, and Howard Pride gets that long one down. Penn State's lead cut to 10 now. Bartram trying to avoid the double team. Gets rid of the ball. Inside Amechi, and Amechi, I think he had dunk on his mind, and Evans thought otherwise and bothered him on the dribble. And Big John saw that open lane to the basket, and took it strong toward the hole. No one in front of him, but uh, Malik Evans able to sneak in from behind and prevent the easy dunk. We were talking about Amechi and how his game has changed a little bit, Barry. He shot 48 three-pointers as a sophomore two years ago. As he did do some things from the perimeter. Last year, he cut that down to only 15 uh, three-point attempts as he became more of a true post player. And I think uh, people around the Big Ten realized that he could shoot that three-pointer and didn't just lay off him and let him roll it over and stroke it from downtown. Well, Sicky will leave and a big hand for the freshman. Donovan Williams replaces him. Amechi missed them both. Rebound Lucas. Vanderbilt trying to get it under 10 here now with 237 to play. Penn State back in their man-to-man -man defense. Lucas brings Amechi out high. Secker goes around the screen and uncorks one and it's good. There's Frank Secker realizing his team's in a bit of trouble here on the road, trying to turn it up a notch. They cut it to seven. Here's Amechi inside. And we have a traveling call to Amechi. Tough break for John. He caught the ball right where he wanted it, but got a little bit in a hurry, unable to catch the ball cleanly, and he walks. Vanderbilt now has cut Penn State's lead to seven. Commodores with the ball. They are three of seven this game on three-pointers. Lucas to Pratt. to go, swinging in the back of the hand. Lucas against Amechi, offensive foul on Lucas. That'll be the second on JJ. Good job by Big John Amechi, getting out on the court. He moves his feet extremely well for a man his size, and he cuts Lucas off and takes that forearm, goes to the floor. Great acting job, too, by Big John. We welcome our fans today throughout Pennsylvania and also in Nashville, Tennessee, watching on WSMV TV in Nashville. Benny Earl shooting for Penn State way short. Amici follows and saves it. Amici's third field goal, he has nine points and Penn State leads it by nine. Got to be. Amici scores very easily because J.J. Lucas has three fouls and can't afford to pick up another. Hook shot by Lucas, he looked like his dad on that one, but it would not fall. That was the old Jerry Lucas, Connie Durking hook shot. Used to be famous in Cincinnati with the old Cincinnati Royals. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't quite perfected that one yet. Amechi is fouled. If that's Lucas, that's his third. 
Howard Pride reaching Pride. in, gets that foul. It'll be his second in the Meche to the line. Fortunate for Vanderbilt that Lucas doesn't pick up this foul. I think he could have, the referee could have called it on either player. The Meche going strong to the basket. Continuing to draw fouls, continuing to get to the foul line. This will be his uh, sixth and seventh attempt of the day. He, he missed two earlier, and he hits that one. He's now four of six. Halftime, we will have statistics and highlights of the first half, and he hits his second free throw. It's now 46-35, Nittany Lions, and Amici gets a breather. 109 to play in the first half. Penn State would like to be able to let him probably sit for the uh, remainder of the half. And he's done a really nice job so far in this game. Back to hand to Evans. Secker around Earl. Could not get it to go. Secunda with a rebound. Secker becoming more aggressive offensively, but uh, he's... Continue to, continues to struggle, as do the Commodores here in the first half at Penn State. That's six rebounds now in the first half for Secunda, who the Nittany Lions need him to give him give them some solid board work. He's playing a little out of position. Normally a three-man forced to play a four position this year after an injury to Penn State's Matt Gaudio. Glenn Secunda, very solid player. He is uh, very versatile. Earl had his shot blocked, but Bartram is there to catch and tip. Greg Bartram always seems to be in the right place. Comes up with a big basket for Penn State, putting him up again by 13. 11 seconds remaining in the half. Pride with a three. Short. Bartram with a rebound. Final seconds of the half. Donovan Williams lets it fly. And the first half has come to an end. So a very balanced scoring attack for Penn State here in the first half, and they've shot the ball very well. Dan Van Bredekoff, as you see, not very happy with what he has seen here in the first half in Red Ball. Tremendous job by Penn State handling the defensive pressure, really forcing Vanderbilt into a lot of turnovers in the first half. Penn State almost a perfect half, scoring 48 points. So the Nittany Lions lead it by 13. At the Shopping can be stressful. Try it when you're eight. <laughs> but at your local True Value, we make it easy, even for a kid with lots of great gifts. And at prices that won't break the old piggy bank. Like this 43-piece quarter-inch tool kit for just $8.77, or this 20-inch toolbox with lift-out tray just $6.99. And parking, it's a piece of cake. True Value, gifts are just around the corner. Gillette introduces the next revolution in shaving closeness. Micro fins. And they're only on the new Sensor XL. These micro fins precede the blades. As Sensor XL's spring mounted blades adjust to your face, these soft, flexible fins gently stretch your skin so your beard stands up for the closest, most comfortable shave. Get closer than ever before. Get the new Gillette Sensor XL. Gosh, the sky is so clear. Hey, look, a shooting star. That means you're gonna go on a trip. No, it doesn't. It means you're supposed to make a wish. Hey, Gene, what would you wish for? Well, I wish my radio would work better. No, really. Well, uh, I wish I could go to some really neat places. I'm going to St. Louis with my cousins. Shh. And I want to go to college and learn about things you kind of don't understand. And... I'd like to be in a ticker tape parade and meet a president. And, and I'd like to be able to fly. For over 150 years, America's universities have given kids from everywhere the, the chance to pursue their dreams through an education. And what their dreams have given back to us is immeasurable. Gosh, Gene, what are you gonna ask for next? The moon? Our halftime score, Penn State leading Vanderbilt 48 to 35. And the Nittany Lions, a very solid first half here. Barry, when you look at Penn State's uh, offensive production, they are shooting better than 50% from the floor 
uh, here in the first half. I think Bruce Parkhill would be very, very pleased with that. I know he would be, and Penn State is handling the defensive pressure very well, moving the basketball on there end of the court, finding open players and just taking great shots and then knocking them down. The Commodores, on the other hand, have 11 first-half turnovers, and you mentioned a couple of times that they did not appear to be in much sync offensively. Uh, your impressions of their offensive uh, first half? Well, they're not moving the basketball very well. Penn State's out hustling the Commodores to all the loose balls, it seems. And uh, they're just struggling, not moving it well, and uh, they got to get better shots and then hit them. The Nittany Lions with very balanced scoring in the first half, getting a big lift off the bench from senior Greg Bartram and also freshman Pete Lasicki. They both played well. Yeah, especially Lasicki. He's been outstanding hitting those big three-pointers, and Bartram just always seems to be in the right place, a classic senior. A couple of foul problems inside for the Commodores. Their ranks are a little thin, as you mentioned, from an injury standpoint anyway. That can cause some problems. And Lucas and Woods with three fouls. Um, Amechi drawing some fouls inside, doing a nice job. So the Nittany Lions lead it by 13 over the Commodores here at the half, 48-35. We'll be back with halftime activities from Rec Hall in just a few moments. Christmas shopping can be stressful. Try it when you're eight! <laughs> but at your local True Value, we make it easy, even for a kid, with lots of great gifts. And at prices that won't break the old piggy bank. Like this 43-piece quarter-inch tool kit for just $8.77, or this 20-inch toolbox with lift-out tray just $6.99. And parking, it's a piece of cake. True Value, gifts are just around the corner. Gillette introduces the next revolution in shaving closeness. Microfins. And they're only on the new Sensor XL. These microfins precede the blades. As Sensor XL's spring mounted blades adjust to your face, these soft, flexible fins gently stretch your skin so your beard stands up for the closest, most comfortable shave. Get closer than ever before. Get the new Gillette Sensor XL. Now, a few words from Archie Bunker on evolution. We didn't crawl out from under no rocks. We didn't have no tails. And we didn't come from monkeys. You atheistic pinko meathead. <laughs> Archie Bunker on gun control. Did you know that 65% of the people murdered in the last 10 years were killed by handguns? Would it make you feel any better, little girl, if they was pushed out of windows? And now, Archie Bunker on video cassette with All in the Family, the collector's edition. The Emmy-winning sitcom that broke all the rules. Yours for only $4.95 plus shipping and handling for your first four-episode video cassette. Now you can experience the legendary wisdom of America's foremost expert on everything. Archie Bunker on politics. And Salvatore, Feldman, O'Reilly, Nelson. It's an Italian, a Jew, an Irishman, and a regular American. <laughs> what I call a balanced ticket. You'll even hear from Archie on the job. To get your first four-episode video for only $4.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free now 1-800-453-9002. Halftime score, as you see, Penn State leading Vanderbilt by 13. Penn State University is one of the great land-grant universities throughout the country, but today Penn State is also a leader in another fr uh, frontier. Let's take a look at Penn State and their look at the stars. The next time you're looking at the night sky, take a closer look at the constellation Virgo. Within that cluster of stars, Dr. Alexander Volchin has discovered the first planets outside our solar system. After more than half a century of investigations aimed at finding a planetary system outside our own, it has finally been done. Now we have firm evidence that they do exist in the universe, and that is, very, that is priceless. But these new planets, 1,500 light years from Earth, were not discovered orbiting a star like our sun. We've been looking for over a half a century for planets around sun-like stars for obvious reasons. We just want to find something that is at least vaguely similar to our own planetary system. The first planetary system outside our own has been found around a very strange object. That object is a pulsar, a dense, rapidly spinning remnant of an imploded star. But pulsars have a unique quality. They are very precise clocks. What they emit is radio pulses that can be regarded as ticks of a very precise clock. 
And in fact, this precision is quite astonishing. Working with the world's largest radio telescope at the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico, Dr. Volchin detected disturbances in the patterns of signals emitted by Pulsar 1257 plus 12. If there is anything irregular about the way that clock ticks, and you can measure it, you begin to wonder what is the reason. By analyzing variations in the arrival times of pulsar pulses, Dr. Volchin was able to infer that two or more objects were exerting a gravitational influence that caused the pulsar to wobble in space, slightly, but regularly. Exacting analysis of the pulses over a three-year period confirmed that pulsar 1257 plus 12 has three orbiting planets. Compared to planet Earth, two of the new planets are about three times the mass of our Earth, and the third approximates the mass of our moon. It is probably fair to say that the discovery of this planetary system around the pulsar will teach us a lot about how planetary systems form. And the fact that planets form around pulsars also means, most likely, that they should form very easily around normal stars. So another conclusion is that probably there are plenty of planets in the universe. If this discovery changes our picture of the universe, could it change our perspective on life on other planets? If there are so many planetary systems in the universe, the probability that life exists somewhere else, not only on Earth, in our own planetary system, is not zero. It may actually be quite significant. We are now at the end of this era of indirect evidence and intelligent guesses about planetary systems. We are now beginning to look for planets with much more confidence than before. Penn State University, leading the pursuit of new frontiers. And welcome back to Rec Hall, where at halftime, Penn State leading Vanderbilt by the score of 48 to uh, 35. Barry, we'll get a chance to look at some highlights here in the first half, and we'll see some of the things that have been have been keys here. There have been some outstanding offensive performances. I'm not sure either team has played great defense, but there have been some scoring. Yeah, Ronnie McMahon right there with a nice drive to the basket, uh, one of his uh, rare buckets. And Penn State just moving the basketball very effectively. Um, Lassie gave him a huge lift off the bench. Here's Howard Pride hitting a long three against the zone that Penn State played, which will probably be shelled for the rest of the ball game. But uh, Penn State doing a nice job playing defense, and uh, Vanderbilt not coming out of their traps and defending Penn State on their offensive end very well. Only uh, nine shots from the floor for Secker and McMahon combined here in the first half. Do you expect that? number of field goal attempts to uh, to increase here in the second half? Yeah, I think Vanderbilt will go to their strength. Their backcourt guys are the guys that uh, score the points for them, so I, I expect to see a lot of screens set for those two guys, and if Vanderbilt's going to get back into it, they'll be led by Secker and McMahon. And off the bench, the Nittany Lions have had good scoring from their guards, Bartram and Lasicki combining for 19 first-half points off the bench. Penn State leads it by 13. We'll be back with more in just a few minutes. Over the years, some pretty hungry folks have stopped by my place. The Mega Meal from KFC is back. I like Mega Meal. Your choice of chicken, a ton of side dishes, even a whole pie, just $14.99. And this week, get a Wiley Coyote mug. <laughs> Must be his mug shot. Just $1.99 with every Mega Meal. <laughs> Collect all four. The Mega Meal from KFC. Enough food to feed your whole family. <laughs> or one Tasmanian devil. You can use a bat and a glove, a skate and a stick, a club and a putter, or a racket and a net. You can play with big orange balls, small hard balls, fuzzy bouncy balls, tiny dimpled balls, pointy brown balls, or no balls at all. You can move on rubber soles, or rubber spikes, or rubber wheels. You can compete with the best, and you can win. And when you want to see it all, you can watch Sports Channel. 24 hours of the best sports from the region and the world. Sports Channel. Use it for all the sports in your life.
Halftime, and we are just about set for the start of the second half with Penn State leading it by 13. But let's look at some of the numbers from the first half. And we'll get a chance to check out Penn State's field goal percentage, which has been very, very solid. Both teams doing an outstanding job at the free throw line. Penn State's moving the basketball so well. Vanderbilt trying to trap and apply pressure, and Penn State taking advantage of that, finding the open player. One of the key numbers for the Nittany Lions uh, from a turnover standpoint, they've committed only five here in the first half. Vanderbilt has actually committed uh, more than twice that many. And the Nittany Lions also holding their own on the boards. Yeah, but pretty even on the on the, uh, on the the boards, but uh, the turnover thing is the key here so far. Penn State doing a great job. And sophomore point guard Danny Earl, only two turnovers for Penn State here in the first half against the Commodore pressure. Back with a second half tip off in just a minute. Over the years, some pretty hungry folks have stopped by my place. The Mega Meal from KFC is back. I like Mega Meal. Your choice of chicken, a ton of side dishes, even a whole pie, just $14.99. And this week, get a Wiley Coyote mug. Hey, must be his mug shot. Just $1.99 with every Mega Meal. Collect all four. The Mega Meal from KFC. Enough food to feed your whole family. Oh, one Tasmanian devil. You can use a bat and a glove, a skate and a stick, a club and a putter, or a racket and a net. You can play with big orange balls, small hard balls, fuzzy bouncy balls, tiny dimpled balls, pointy brown balls, or no balls at all. You can move on rubber soles, or rubber spikes, or rubber wheels. You can compete with the best, and you can win. And when you want to see it all, you can watch Sports Channel. 24 hours of the best sports from the region and the world. Sports Channel. Use it for all the sports in your life. Well, before we started the game, we talked about several factors that could be keys to today's contest. Now that it's halftime, let's look back at some of those. And Barry, it's been an up-tempo game for the most part. It certainly has. We thought that would be an advantage for Vanderbilt because we thought the turnovers would lead to the up-tempo game. But it, uh, Penn State's getting good shots and uh, doing a good job in the up-tempo setting. And their perimeter game has been outstanding, I think, on both ends of the floor. Penn State has executed two perfections at this point in the game. They have just been perfect. Following the game, we will have, near the end of the broadcast, we will have our player of the game announcement. And we get set now for the start of the second half. Sean Carlton inbounding to Danny Earl, and Penn State has the ball. Earl, Secunda, Carlton, Amechi, and Williams on the floor for Penn State. Secker, Evans, Amechi for the drive, can't score. That's it back and scores. Secker, Evans, McMahon, Woods, and Whitehead on the floor for Vanderbilt. Smart move by Penn State. Go with the guy who has the foul trouble, and that's Chris Woods. Take it right at him. John Amechi did a great job that time. 13 points for Amechi. Penn State's biggest lead at 15. Evans powering his way to the basket and scoring. His first bucket of the night. Nice job by Vanderbilt, taking the ball inside as well. And Malik Evans with a good, strong move. And Amechi trying to get rid of the ball, barely beat the count. Secunda driving, and he hits. Wow. <laughs> Impossible shot by Glenn Secunda, but he gets it down. Beautiful move in traffic. Ten points for Secunda. Secker shooting and scores a three. He looked like he was consciously looking for that shot. His second three-pointer of the game. As you mentioned, Frank, uh, Secker is going to try to step up his offense here in the second half. 52-40, Nittany Lions. Secker with seven points. Donovan Williams shooting. Rebound Whitehead. Donovan Williams had a great start in this ball game. Really got off to, got off quickly. Uh, hasn't done much since then. Has five points. And Evans around Secunda, and Secunda hooking him with the body. Picks up his second foul. Point of emphasis this year for the officials, watch the hand checking. And there's Secundo with the left hand on him a little bit, and a little hip check as well. McMahon, quick shot, quick pass. Nice wide open 12-foot shot by Vanderbilt on that out-of-bounds play. Eight points for McMahon, 52-42. Penn State by 10. Carlton avoids the double team to Amechi. This is Donovan Williams. You can see in Rec Hall, the students are right on the floor. Mechie trying to snake 
make his way across the baseline, and Woods is what they do. Penn State still doing the job, going inside right at Chris Woods. Already with three fouls, and this will be his fourth. John Amici trying to spin around him. Does a nice job drawing that foul. Woods will have to take a seat next to Coach Van Bredekoff along the sidelines after picking up his fourth foul. Down to Earl. This is a Meiji. Sean Carlton out to Earl. Williams to Carlton. Nice catch. Couldn't get the shot in traffic. Secunda is hammered as he tries to follow. Looked like Lucas fouled Carlton a little bit as he was going to the basket strong trying to get that dunk. But Penn State hustling still, coming up with a loose ball. Secunda gets that one. This is a nice catch here by Carlton to keep this from being a turnover. Yeah, Donovan Williams has to throw it high over Pax Whitehead to get it to him. And now Secunda still coming up with the rebounds. He has done a great job on the boards today, has six. Rebound. 11 points now for Secunda as Penn State leads by 11. Glenn had 15 points in only 17 minutes at Duquesne on Wednesday. He, he knows where the basket is. He's an excellent player. A real big addition for Penn State to have add a player of that quality to their lineup. He transferred from Syracuse, a former New Jersey High School Player of the Year at Persephone Hills. He averaged just under four points a game at Syracuse. Vanderbilt going inside to Evans. Nice move, but couldn't get the shot to fall. Secunda again the rebound. Secunda now with eight rebounds in the day. Looks like the Commodores are getting better shots, at least early here in the second half. Another board for Secunda and had it stripped away. Here comes McMahon on the run. McMahon around Williams. Shot is off to the left. Secunda with a rebound. A tough shot. Donovan Williams played good defense on Ronnie McMahon that time. Penn State still doing the job on the offensive glass. Here's a major. Works on Lucas, and that was pretty easy. Very easy. Pumped it with the right hand. That's a that's a, a fifth-year senior against a freshman. Yep, a little education this time out for J.J. Lucas. And we have a foul away from the ball. Penn State leading 56-42. Uh, mentioned the hand checking. Dan Earl got caught that time with his hands on Frank Secker. And boy, that, uh, that is really a good change for the officials to really take a strong look at hand checking. It's uh, kind of gotten out of control in the NCAA basketball. You might have doubled your scoring out because they not been holding you all day, right? Oh, I'd have been scared. Here's a clean steal, and Williams driving, and he's fouled by McMahon. Donovan Williams going for showtime. He had that one cuffed, trying to go for the big dunk. Penn State applying the defensive pressure, coming up with the steals and getting out in transition. Ronnie McMahon whacks him across the arm to prevent this big dunk. Great athlete, Donovan Williams. He gives the Nittany Lions a, a, a real burst of quickness when he comes into a game and his career has gone on. That quickness has been much more under control. A real spark plug for the Nittany Lions coming in here and uh, able to make some slashing moves to the basket and uh, really gives them a lift. He did not score against Duquesne on Wednesday in 14 minutes. Had a career high in the season opener against Mount St. Mary's. This is the second free throw. Penn State leading by 15. As we mentioned, Williams is playing with a bruised left hand. This pride from the wing. We have a foul away from the ball on, on the rebound by Evans. Coming over the back of Secunda. Secunda in the right place. Good block out. Nice fundamentally sound play by him. Getting getting good position. And Malik Evans get caught up, gets caught on the back. Carlton to Secunda. Not much pressure. And we have a technical foul on Vanderbilt head coach Dan Van Vertical. The Vanderbilt bench complaining to the referees, asking them to call it both ways. And uh, went a little over the line and draw the technical foul. And now they're already down by 15 as Secunda steps to the line for two. Secunda this year, 10 of 12 at the free throw line. He has 12 points thus far today. Look at 13. 
Well, under Bruce Parkhill, Penn State is 53-7 and seven at home against non-conference opponents. He's had great success in December against non-conference uh, non teams. And Penn State is very similar to Vanderbilt in that they are a different team when they're at home. Penn State winning 73% of their games in Rec Hall over the last 62 years. And uh, Vanderbilt wins about 78% of theirs in Memorial Gym. So uh, it's a different story when you get these guys in here. Last year, these two teams played in Nashville, of course, and Vanderbilt had a big second half to win going away. Mechie hit the underneath the backboard. Here come the Commodores, down by 17. Pride, a little bit too out of control that time, and we have a jump ball. And Howard Pride made a nice move to the basket that time, but uh, when the traffic came to him, he's unable to finish. Time out of the floor with 15.53 to play. And right now it's all Nittany Lions. Penn State leading it 59 to 42. We'll be back. Look to be well on their way to a league. If you have rust in your water, you could end up with clogged pipes, which could lead to bigger problems. Don't wait for rust to strike. Use Diamond Crystal Red Out. The water softener salt pellets that remove rust from your water. <laughs> Red out pellets from Diamond Crystal, because a little rust can do a lot of damage. Making it to the pros takes a certain level of excellence. The experience to get the job done right and a reputation for quality. Having what you need on hand, putting the parts together for the best possible performance. Being in the pros takes a special brand of confidence, and for professionally trained technicians, that confidence is CarQuest. CarQuest, welcome to the pros. When young policyholders come to me, I look at them and think, boy, that was me 15 years ago. I remember very well how quickly things changed for Debbie and me. Marriage, children, our first house, it's exactly why State Farm's family insurance checkups are such a good idea. Your agent helps you put it all in perspective so you can make the right decisions. The way you were five years ago is not the way you are today. It's comforting to me when I can say to my policyholders, hey, I've been there. State Farm is there. Welcome back to Rec Hall. Frank Gardenia, Barry Booker with you. And uh, Barry, both these teams have some injuries today. Yeah, and uh, the key here is Penn State's players with injuries, with the exception of Gaudio, are all able to play today. Vanderbilt has uh, Bates, Sharon, and Brian Milburn, who are uh, inactive today, and it's causing them some problems. The foul trouble, especially inside, they're not able to, uh, to go to their bench and bring players in that are used to playing significant minutes. Commodores will have the ball down by 17. it off the back of his foot. Williams picks it up. He'll drive on Pride and missed it. Secunda follows and scores. Great hustle by Glenn Secunda to run the floor. Does not take for granted that Donovan Williams is going to make that shot. And he hustles and it pays off for two points. Penn State by 19. And a steal by Carlton to Secunda. Look out. And he's fouled. Penn State playing great defense, coming up with turnovers, getting in transition, and really doing to Vanderbilt what Vanderbilt has done to its first two opponents this season. Last year, it was all Vanderbilt in the second half. Penn State actually led by four at halftime, and then Vanderbilt came back to win going away 83-60. to The Nittany Lions last year in Nashville shot less than 28% from the floor in the second half. And I'm sure Bruce Parkhill reminded his team of that performance in Nashville and the second half collapse that they had against the Commodores last year. And Penn State has come out very strong here in the second half and extended their lead up to 20 points now. Secunda is 5 of 5, now 6 of 6 on free throws. He has 18 points. And Penn State shooting 50% from the floor here today in this one. And that has been Penn State's problem, putting the ball in the basket. They're only a 44% shooting team last year. A foul on Earl. That will be his third. Stops the clock momentarily. 15-11 left to play. Penn State leading 63-42. 
State is able to score consistently from the perimeter and shoot a high field goal percentage this year, they're going to be a tough team in the Big Ten this time. McMahon threw it right to Secunda. Not a good pass to Amechi. And Amechi had it tipped away, but Secunda comes back with it. Out to Earl. To Williams. He's got it. <laughs> when it's going well, you get the bounces. Penn State. Um, Amechi in trouble. The ball batted around, and Penn State ends up with an easy jump shot. Donovan Williams with eight. Secker trying to get the Commodores going, and he can't hit. Amechi to Earl, three on one. Williams again. Secunda to follow, and he's fouled. Penn State gets a three on one break, and Jan Van Bredekhoff is calling for a timeout here. He wants to get his group together. 14 27 to play, and then the Lions continue to stretch it out. Penn State leading it 65 to 42. We'll be back in a few minutes. If it runs, if it swings, if it jams, if it skates, if it spikes, if it slides, if it accelerates, if it hits, and hits, and hits, if it birdies, if it receives, if it kicks, if it serves, if it competes, if it scores, and scores, and scores, and scores, and scores, then it channel. 24 hours of the best sports from the region and the world. If it's sports, then it must be Sports Channel. I can't believe it! Did she do Dr. Rose? Slam, bam, jam! Hey, fans, there is nothing like the excitement of college sports. And guess what? Now you can get a hot new magazine that's nothing but college sports. Every issue brings you the inside story on football, baseball, hockey, and more. Hey, and does it cover college hoops? Are you serious? Like nobody else. But it's unbelievable, baby. You can get a whole year of college sports for just $11.95. Can you believe it? There's more. Call now, and you also get my super sensational college basketball yearbook free. You'll get all the facts, the stats, plus my scintillating predictions. This deal is awesome, baby. Call now. Call 1-800-453-5600 now for 12 great issues of college sports, plus your free Dick Vitale's college basketball yearbook. We come to you today from Venerable Rec Hall here on the Penn State campus, and the Penn State Nittany Lions leading Vanderbilt 65-42. This has been the home of Penn State basketball for better than 60 years, and it will not be the home much longer. There's the original look at Rec Hall. And before long, Penn State will be moving cross campus to the sparkling new state-of-the-art Jordan Center. Be a big boost to the Penn State program uh, to definitely help their recruiting as they uh, really get into the Big Ten and uh, try to make a move up and end that lead. Then Secunda hitting a pair of free throws, and Penn State leads at 67-42. Secunda, 8 of 8 on free throws here in the second half alone. Another steal by the Nittany Lions, and Secunda comes away with it. And he'll go himself all the way. Here comes Secker now, stumbling out of the pack. Cried on the drive. Can't hit it. And we have offensive basket interference, I believe, on the Commodore. Howard Pride's really having a tough time finishing. He is not used to being counted on as heavily as the doors are counting on him tonight. And that's an easy layup that uh, he just doesn't convert. Carlton carefully against McMahon. Senses the double team coming and gives it to Earl. The double team trap really hasn't been very effective today. No, it hasn't. Vanderbilt has given up some easy shots because they're out trying to double team and not getting turnovers. Penn State only six turnovers in the game so far. Amechi with a nice look to Secunda. Secunda is fouled on his follow-up. This is a Vanderbilt team that had 18 steals against Sanford, which was a school record. Then they broke that the very next game with 20 steals against Tennessee Tech. Yeah, they're, they're averaging 14, 27 turnovers with Penn State with excellent passing. Um, John Amechi just threw a great pass by... Malik Evans' ear to Matt Secunda, who ends up with an easy attempt, and he's at the line right now. 
and Evans has fouled out with better than 13 minutes left to play. And he came in averaging over 12 points a game. He has only two here today. And we're seeing the, uh, the injuries and foul trouble difficulties for the Commodores begin to take their toll as uh, Coach Ben Bredikoff trying to find someone to go to. And looks like Billy Despaltro will be coming in. Look at Secunda's numbers there a moment ago. He, we mentioned he's really playing out of position. He's a, a three-man who would be much more comfortable playing a little bit more on the wing. He's had to move into the four position. Uh, Penn State needs him to be a rebounder, which you know is, is, is not easy for him. But, boy, he's done the job on the boards here today. Yeah, he's such a versatile, versatile player uh, and such a smart player. Really knows and understands the game. So he is able to adjust to playing inside or playing outside and can cause some matchup problems for opposing teams. And Secunda leads to a standing ovation. 22 points and 12 rebounds for Secunda as he has helped stake the Nittany Lions to a 27-point lead. Phil Williams replaces Secunda. I mentioned that Penn State is a different team in this building. Lucas missing. Penn State beat Minnesota last year by 11 here in this building and then go on the road and lose by 30 there. In a 23-point loss at Memorial Gym in Nashville last year, and now they're ahead by 27 here this afternoon. Pucci trying to work his way around Lucas. With Donovan Williams. And eight, eight seconds left in the shot clock. will give him a second chance and a fresh 35. Penn State starting to work that shot clock, running it down, just trying to whittle time off the clock. Williams for the house. And the foul. Beautiful penetration by Donovan Williams, drawing defenders. Phil Williams going very strong to the basket. Just throwing it down right over J.J. Lucas. Well, when you're as big as Phil, you don't leap as high as some of the NBA guys, but he's got the facial expression. <laughs> he's got the growl. When he gets there, he's hard to stop. Here come the Commodores, down by 29, and Secker misfires. Phil Williams with a rebound. The space eater, Phil Williams down low, coming up with a nice board. away with the ball. Secker again on the move. Commodores have been very cold this half. Shot by McMahon misses. Rebound Phil Williams. Vanderbilt has not hit a shot from the floor for over six and a half minutes. Penn State will want to slow it down now. That last shot by Carlton. The crowd loved it, but Coach Parkhill didn't. He wants to slow it down and run some clock. Earl committing the foul on Despaltro, and I think that'll be four on Dan Earl. Secker knocked it away from behind, and Earl trying to recover. And you have to talk about Danny Earl a little bit. This is a guy who hasn't put up a lot of scoring numbers, but today he's been a very steadying influence, and Barry, you need a point guard to, to keep you just in sync, going at the right speed, and he's controlled things well. He's done a great job running the offense effectively, getting the ball to the right people in the right places. And Penn State, only seven turnovers today. He is... He has been quite effective. A pair of freshman guards now in for Penn State. Damian Knight and Peter Sickman. His Whitehead missing, and he can't snap the Commodore slump. Again, they have not had a field goal in almost seven minutes now. And Vanderbilt has been outscored 23-7 to in the second half so far. There's Carlton in lots of traffic, and he is fouled by Whitehead. So when you have a great shooting team, like the Commodores, and, you, and you're in this type of slump, it, it's just impossible to get anything working. It really is, and uh, different individuals begin to press, and uh, there's a tendency to start trying to force it and maybe take some shots that you wouldn't normally take, and that just causes the struggling to, uh, to continue. Carlton missing the free throw. Penn State leading 71-42. We have 11-24 to play. Nittany Lion lead. Vanderbilt.
Vanderbilt as a team has hit 15 of 39 from the floor here today. Secker will shoot. That was heavily contested. Rebound off to Despaltro. He follows, and he can't hit. Wow. Again, a lot of traffic there. Despaltro probably should have kicked that one back out and looked for a better opportunity. Knight to Carlton. He'll let it fly. He's got it. That's a three. Carlton has become a much more effective three-point shooter. He shot better than 40% from three-point range last year in the Big Ten, which is the final 18 games of the season. So he's really progressing as a player. 75-42. Whitehead. This is Baker in the game. Shot is just everything. We have a foul on Lissicki on the rebound. Fred Baker just joined the Vanderbilt team as a walk-on. He's a, a football player, a wide receiver, is a, a scholarship in football, and now he's joined the Vanderbilt basketball team and uh, trying to, to work out the kinks. Many people in Pennsylvania, Barry, may not realize Vanderbilt's one of only four schools that has hit a three-pointer in every game that they have played since the rule was instituted back in 1986-87. That's 261 straight games. The other schools were Loyola Marymount, UNLV, and Princeton. So Vanderbilt has always had a, a reputation for being able to shoot the ball from the perimeter. And today, it, is just, uh, it has just not been there. Doing a nice job using the three-point line. Just since that rule was put in, has always been very effective getting those three-pointers on. And you contributed to that. Uh, a few times. I hoisted up a few of them. <laughs> Foul away from the ball on the uh, Commodores with 10.27 to play, and the Nittany Lions will walk to the other end and shoot again. Bandy this half, 3 of 16 from the floor. Some frustration showing on the Vanderbilt side. Coach Van Bredikoff complaining about the officiating today. As Vanderbilt trails by 34. They're not, uh, Vanderbilt isn't shooting the ball well is their main trouble. I don't think the officials are, are beating them this way. And Mechie hits two free throws. And he's kind of, a, he's had a very solid, quiet game, but effective. 17 points now and eight rebounds for Mechie. He just hasn't had to carry the load today, but he's still putting up his numbers. Penn State using a lot of players today, getting balance and spurts from different players at different times today. Looked very good this afternoon. Inside the sprawl throw with a jump hook, and finally the drought has been ended. The sprawl throw with five points at 77 44. Penn State leading. That's their first bucket in almost 10 minutes. Amazing drought for the Commodores. And you look out there and see all those good scores and good shooters. Amazing that they could go that long without a field goal. Well, Sicky just turns, shoots, and hits. Cash money, Pete Lasicki from downtown. 15 points for Lasicki. And he's only played 12 minutes. Here's the drive, it's blocked by Amechi. Despaltro missed the follow and Amechi comes away with it. Penn State's defense has been incredible. We've talked about Vanderbilt struggling offensively, but it's mainly because of the amazing defense from Penn State. Foul inside, Bartram with a behind-the-back pass to Williams, and he was fouled by Despaltro. Penn State's got it going right now. Greg Bartram whips it behind his back, the bounce pass to Big Phil, who draws the foul and ends up at the line. Barry, when, when you're, a team is not shooting well, you look like you're not playing well. And when you are shooting well, it covers a multitude of sins, so to speak. That's right. Uh, it certainly does. And uh, Vanderbilt unable to get their pressure defense going today. So uh, they've had to play a little bit more in the half-court setting, which they haven't been forced to do to this point, even in the uh, exhibition games and two regular season games. So uh, this is something new for them, and they really didn't handle it well at all. Williams' second free throw is good. He got them both. He's 4 of 5 today. And Penn State leads at 82 to 44. This is really a surprise. Unbelievable. Everyone thought this would be a really close, tightly contested game all the way. The shot out of the corner is good. Makes it 82 to 46. That was Maddox with his first bucket. The freshman has two points today. Here's Damian McKnight. He 
rebound to Greg Bartram. Down to Williams. And it won't go. With Penn State continuing to hustle, come up with the loose balls. They are just playing excellent basketball today. Shot from the wing is good by Pride. 82-49. Pride with his second three-pointer of the game. Now the pressure by the Commodores. Williams to Bartram. Spins against Pride. Still not across midcourt. Struggling and comes away with it. Barely. Timeout is called by Bruce Parker. Barely beat that 10-second count this last time. Coach Parkdale doesn't like a sloppy play. 8-11 remaining to play here in the game. Penn State leading Vanderbilt 82-49. We'll be back in a few minutes. After Automobile Magazine named Plymouth Neon Automobile of the Year, there just isn't a lot left to say. Gillette introduces the next revolution in shaving closeness. Micro fins. And they're only on the new Sensor XL. These micro fins precede the blades. As Sensor XL's spring mounted blades adjust to your face, these soft, flexible fins gently stretch your skin so your beard stands up for the closest, most comfortable shave. Get closer than ever before. Get the new Gillette Sensor XL. It might surprise you that a lot of folks do their holiday shopping at True Value. You see, we've got just what you need to wrap up a happy holiday. Still, some people just can't wait to get to those big discount stores. And wait. And wait. Well, now at True Value, this Rubbermaid bird feeder is just $7.77. And this True Tone telephone is just $9.97. So, why wait? True Value. Gifts are just around the corner. You see the time and you see the Penn State lead, and let's look at some of the reasons why it's been so one-sided today. Barry? Penn State has handled the pressure extremely well and forced Vanderbilt into a bunch of turnovers. Uh, defensively, Penn State has been excellent against the Vanderbilt guards. Ryan McMahon with only nine points this afternoon. And Glenn Secunda with a solid day for the Nittany Lions. Pete Lasicki has done an outstanding job on the three-pointers. So two new faces for Penn State have had big days. Secunda a transfer, Lasicki a freshman. It's amazing how one guy shooting the perimeter jumper as well, the way Lasicki has today, can really pick up his entire team. Penn State shooting 55% from three-point range this afternoon. Well, when you have that happen, it opens things up for your big guy, Amechi, who can be effective when he's not double and triple team. Really opens things up for everybody when uh, one guy draws that much attention, the way Lasicki has been able to do today. Greg Bartram dragging his pivot foot. And the Commodores get it back with just under eight minutes remaining. Little Andre Frazier into the ball game for the Commodores. You see some of the younger guys playing on the Vanderbilt side now. Inside is Woods with a nice left-handed move, and he has six points. 82-51, Penn State. Chris Woods has gotten into foul trouble today and uh, has really struggled all afternoon, and now he's out. John Amici draws the foul on Woods, and I think that's his fifth. As you mentioned, he's been in and out, in and out, and comes back in and doesn't, he's not able to stay long. It's encouraging to see him able to score down low this afternoon in the few minutes that he was in the game, but he uh, has really struggled trying to guard John Amici all day. Amici going to the basket, getting Woods and Lucas in the foul trouble. And now Woods is, has to go to the sidelines. Machi's shooting, and he has 18 points now after that one. He had 11 in the first half, but he's come up with seven here in the second half. And he's got another one. 84-51 Penn State. The Nittany Lions have done an outstanding job at the free throw line as a team. They have hit 29 of 35. Vanderbilt only 10 free throw attempts today. 
Bryant can't get it to go. Frazier with a rebound. The impressive thing you mentioned about uh, Penn State's foul shooting. The amazing thing is the 34 attempts. Maddox gets another three-pointer down. He looks like he's going to be a really good ball player in the future for Vanderbilt. Gets the press. They go long to Williams, and he scores, and it's foul. He didn't get the dunk he wanted, but he got the basket, and Lucas fouls him. And that should be all for J.J. Lucas now. As uh, Bill Williams once again going strong to the basket. Penn State handling the Vanderbilt pressure as they have all day. They throw over the top on this occasion. And J.J. Lucas has no choice but to hack. Well, Bill Luke, Williams gets it down. Lucas is the third Commodore to foul out of the game. You combine that with the injury problem, the ranks are thin. Very thin for Vanderbilt. Right now, Billy Despotter on the court, uh, playing the center position, and uh, Ronnie McMahon has to slide down to the power forward spot. Phil Williams has eight points off the bench. Free throw is no good. Rebound is tipped and controlled by Secker. A mismatch out on the court. Amechi guarding Maddox. The Spalco had it blocked from behind by Amechi. Amechi sneaking in behind the freshman Billy Despaltro, blocking that shot. The senior is uh, giving an education to everybody this afternoon. Can all slip in. The Spalco shot is short. Williams rebounds and gives to McKnight. 6.37 to play. Amechi again for Bartram. Number Williams. And we have a lane violation, three seconds on Phil Williams. Talking about Phil Williams, as Barry alluded to earlier, he's playing with a bone spur in his left ankle joint. And that has really limited his work, and he's fighting through that here in December. And he's played well today. Traveling on Vanderbilt. Six twenty remaining. Penn State leading 86-54. McKnight against Frazier to Bartram. Bartram double teamed in the middle to Lusicki. Williams, oh, he had a shot at a dunk, but he couldn't hang on. Nice speed from the major. Phil just lost it. Little showtime now for Penn State with this big lead. They're just out there having fun right now. Frazier from long range. Spaltro with a rebound and Lasicki fouls it. Well, when you have the big lead and the team is trapping and gambling, you, you put yourself in a position to have some two-on-ones and some open situations, and you can't afford to, to show a little bit. That's right. Uh, these guys from Penn State right now looking to make the highlight film this year on the Commodores. They've had a bunch of highlights this afternoon. They've had an excellent ball game. Pass is knocked away and controlled. McKnight comes up with it. And he had it knocked away from behind, and Secker has it. Now the corner is Maddox. That missed everything. And Maddox has Phil Williams guarding him, and there's no way Williams can keep up with Maddox if he puts it on the floor. He tries to take a standstill jumper. McKnight fouling Frazier. Knight having trouble controlling the ball, and he fouled in his frustration trying to get it back. Great hustle by Secker, he, who's played hard from start to finish here today. It's a 32-point game, but he is still really getting after it defensively. Secker has an awful lot of heart. A really a uh, point guard and a leader for the Commodores as Phil Williams gets a big hand going out. He had a really good night for Penn State this evening. Penn State at Duquesne on Wednesday shot just better than 40% from the floor as a team. Today, a very solid 47%, and almost 56% from behind the three-point line. And that uh, Penn State's problem the last couple of seasons is uh, shooting percentage. Uh, field goals last year, 44%. Three-pointers, they were 34%. So if they can continue to shoot this way this year, they will be a factor in the Big Ten race. Frazier with the free throws makes it 86-56. Wisconsin leading Texas Tech 
in the second half. Michigan playing at UT Chattanooga. Down at the roundhouse. Texas. Texas Tech will be a Penn State opponent in the uh, out in Arizona. On the steal by Ronnie McMahon. Commodore is really still playing very, very hard defensively. And it's knocked out of bounds by, by McKnight. We are under the five-minute mark now, 4.55 remaining. Penn State leading it by 30. Penn State heading to the Fiesta Bowl Classic right after Christmas and uh, play Texas Tech in uh, probably Arizona. And a foul on Pete Nasicki. Well, the Commodores getting ready for a stretch of home games as well, Barry. I know Virginia comes to town on Tuesday. That's another, another interesting matchup. That'll be an awfully tough matchup. Virginia, excellent quickness out on the perimeter. They have a really good team, top 20 this year. Corey Alexander, a great player for Virginia. So they're going to be tough to handle for the Commodores. Secker gets the free throw. He is three of three from the charity stripe today. He has nine points thus far. And he's in double figures. 86-58, Penn State. Frank, we mentioned the Virginia game. Uh, the folks down in Middle Tennessee with us today can uh, watch Vanderbilt against Virginia on Tuesday night from Nashville. That will be on WSMB as well. Stay with the ball. Secunda back into the game. This is the shot. He goes after it, rebounds, and scores. Well, that's kind of typified the whole day. Secunda shooting, rebounding, scoring. 24 points, a new career high. Glenn Secunda has been excellent today. And uh, I look for him to head to the bench and get a rousing ovation when he does. Pride makes it 88 to 60 with his basket. Here's the alley oop for Amici, was not quite there. Spaltrow did a nice job. Here's Secker left alone, and he cans it. Good job by Secker spotting up behind the three-point line and getting a nice look, draining. 88-63. 3.52 remaining. Mechie to the second. Out to Bartram. Penn State trying to run a little shot clock here. Work the time down. Mechie maneuvering his way through traffic, and he was fouled before the shot. <laughs> well, Mechie can look over at the scoring scorer's table and see that Michael Joseph is about to come in for him. He's trying to make a big move before he exits. And there's another Vanderbilt player who has fouled out, Billy Despaltro, being forced to the bench with his fifth foul. Vanderbilt looks like they're going to have to play all guards now. The injury problems and the uh, foul trouble. This, yep. this kid of Mechie, Barry, and uh, you knew him when he was at Vanderbilt his freshman year. He loves to play the game. He really does. Uh, he might miss one of these free throws just so he can stay on the floor. <laughs> <a little> longer. <laughs> He's the kind of guy who will go to practice and then show up at the recreation center later on that day just to shoot around and play with whoever's there. Really just, just love the, loves the action, loves the attention. Well, he's got the first free throw, so if he wants to stay in the game, this is the one he needs to miss. <laughs> I think he'll enjoy the ovation as well. He may go ahead and make this one. And he does. And he will leave, and uh, Michael Joseph will replace it. It's 90 to 63, Penn State in command with 337 left to play here in Rec Hall. We'll be back. If it runs, if it swings, if it jams, if it skates, if it spikes, if it slides, if it accelerates, if it hits, and hits, and hits, if it birdies, if it receives, if it kicks, if it serves, if it competes, if it scores, and scores, and scores, and scores, and scores, then it must be Sports Channel. 24 hours of the best sports from the region and the world. If it's sports, then it must be Sports Channel.
Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school with Dynamic Practice Organization, a revolutionary new instructional videotape. Dynamic Practice Organization features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky with his famous building block approach to athletic training. This exciting instructional videotape features the same drills, techniques, and methods that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Dynamic Practice Organization makes any coach look like a genius and organizes offensive and defensive practices that players of all ages and ability levels can't wait to attend. And immensely improves team communication skills and even conditioning. This is the instructional video that's a winner. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-282-5020. The Dynamic Practice Organization teaching video makes a great gift, too. Call now, 1-800-282-5020. And uh, our player of the game today, as Penn State has controlled the second half, is Penn State forward Glenn Secunda. Secunda with 24 points, 13 rebounds, 10 of 10 from the free throw line, 7 of 11 from the floor. He's been very effective. He has been. Outstanding game by Secunda. He got two steals to go with all those great numbers. So he typifies the effort by Penn State today. Outstanding job. Penn State with 15 points off of turnovers today, only three for Vanderbilt. Penn State was worried about the turnover situation against this Commodore defense here this afternoon, but they've played well. This is Frazier. Frazier will shoot and miss. Rebound Bartram. And the crowd here in Red Call is chanting, we want Nate. And if he gets in, you'll, you'll be seeing one of the great stories in the country playing for the Nittany Lions today. Here's Secunda in traffic, missing the shot, but drawing the foul. Nate Allhouse, who may or may not get in here today, is a former manager who now dresses for the Nittany Lions. And he kind of is a hero, I think, to managers all over the country, Barry. That's the fantasy of, of every manager on every team. Yeah, Penn State has had some injury troubles over the years and uh, really a problem keeping enough numbers ready and active for pra practice. And uh, Nate has stepped in and done a real nice job filling in for Penn State, dresses, travels with the team, and uh, is a... Uh, crowd favorite, obviously, and gives the team a big lift. He may get a chance to play today. Secunda with a second one. Missed them both. This is Maddox. Tried. Nice speed to Baker. Baker got himself in a tough spot, and Joseph comes away with it. I'm sure Fred Baker wasn't expecting to get this much action today. Bartram, nice look to Secunda. Great feed by Greg Bartram, 92-63. Greg Bartram still making the plays, doing the right things, making the right decisions all day long. And Maddox can't hang on to it. It'll be Penn State's call. Yet another turnover by the Commodores. That's number 21 today. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, both of these teams have grueling conference schedules, so... This game was important because it's a, it's a pretty attractive win for whoever comes away with it. Penn State begins conference play on January 8th at home against Michigan. And the Vanderbilt Commodores open against Alabama on the 4th of January. And Nate Dalthouse rises from the bench and gets a rise from the crowd. And you're right, uh, scheduling-wise, Penn State with those 18 conference games, that makes it very difficult to even to have a winning season, even though they do have a very solid team. So... Uh, this will be a big one for them, and Vanderbilt will have to regroup. Joseph almost lost his balance and missed the shot. Dangerous looking play as Baker is sliding toward his knees. Here comes Bartram out of traffic to Lasicki, and he can't hang on. 147 left, and here comes Nate Allhouse and Chris Rogers into the game for Penn State, a pair of walk on guards. Allhouse from Linux, Pennsylvania, there he is. He's the Tasmanian devil of this team. This guy is a human whirlwind out here. Really active, a great attitude. And uh, Allhouse, listen to him chant. They're calling his name. And he's like a matador. He's kind of up in the backcourt saying, come on, come on. <laughs> Lots of traffic, scores, and is fouled by Joseph. 
139 to play. Vanderbilt makes it a 92-65 game as Howard Cry continues to play hard. There's a look at Joseph who picks up the foul. Brian Mockamer now also coming in for Penn State. Number double zero and Secunda will lead to a fine ovation. Well deserved ovation. He worked really hard inside getting getting those rebounds and putting the ball in the basket for Penn State. Great game from uh, Glenn Secunda. Pride makes it a three point play. 92-66. Secunda with 26 points as he leaves the game and we have a foul on second. Well, Vanderbilt's had some foul problems today. Evans fouled out with 13.34 to play. Chris Woods fouled out with 7.31 to play. Then less than a minute later, J.J. Lucas was gone at the 6.59 mark. And then with 3.37 to play, Billy DeSprotro was disqualified with five fouls. So it's been a tough game. It really has been. When you play that pressure defense with the traps and so forth, uh, the other team, Penn State, today has been able to get some good opportunities and Vanderbilt has found itself in bad defensive position and uh, they've been forced to foul in a lot of cases. Shot by Carson is good. He's in double figures now with 10 points. And it's 93 to 66. Carson's really had a nice solid game. He really has. He had a lot of, lot of little plays, got in his hands on a, an awful lot of loose balls and just done a, a great job today. Shot by Maddox. Baker with a nice rebound and a follow-up. Brad Baker getting his first basket as a collegiate. This is Rogers, and it's stolen by second. 102 remaining. Frazier driving, and he was fouled. Talking about Greg Bartonberry, he's an example that you do not have to have great quickness to play defense. Greg yeah. makes up for it with being a very smart player who anticipates and has very strong hands. He knows the game and knows where he needs to be, both defensively and offensively, and is a very effective player, the senior for Penn State. Certainly it helps to be quick, but you can make up for it with other things. If you understand the game, as you mentioned, know how to play and know how to play defense, you can still be a solid defensive player. Frazier hits the second shot. 93-69. Here's Nate Allhouse. <laughs> the crowd wants him to, to get one in the air. Nate on the move to Joseph. And he couldn't hit. Mockamer with a follow. Brian Mockamer, a walk-on out of Scoop Hill Haven, Pennsylvania. There's Maddox with an easy layup. 95-71 our score. 38 seconds remaining. Althouse is trapped. Comes out of it. Look out. He might dunk one. <laughs> oh, it couldn't, he wouldn't go. And Mockamer lost it out of bounds. It'll be Vanderbilt's ball. Althouse almost able to get that shot down. Nice job coming out of the trap and weaving his way through, pre through pressure. Just unable to get the shot down. Bartram leaving with 10 points. Penn State leading at 95-71. Carlton Langley in for the Nittany Lions. Another walk-on. Shot is missed by Frazier. Baker rebounds and scores. Fred Baker, after just a few days of practice, able to come in and get a few points, get a little experience in his debut as a Commodore. Penn State 95 points today. Their highest point total since scoring 96 against Duquesne a year ago. Here's Rodgers with 12 seconds left. Into Joseph. Joseph to Allhouse. Back to Joseph. It'll be out of bounds. To the Nittany Lions with three seconds left. Really a phenomenal performance today by Penn State. Everyone contributing. Very balanced effort. And they will be a team to be reckoned with in the Big Ten this year. Penn State will come away with a another home court win. They're 30 seventh in their last 38 tries in non-conference play and they win it 95-73 over the Commodores. We'll be back with the play of the game and more after this message. This year, more fathers and sons will spend Saturday mornings together. 
More couples will celebrate golden wedding anniversaries, and more friends will get to know each other a little better. State Farm is pleased to announce that last year, almost 2,000 fewer people were victims of drunk drivers because programs like Designated Driver are working. But we still have a long way to go. Please, be a good neighbor. Be a Designated Driver. My dad's a doctor, and you have to be real smart to be a doctor. Well, my dad fixes cars, and he's a lot smarter than your dad, because a doctor only has two models to fix, men and women, and they never change. My dad has to know how to fix hundreds of car models, and they change every year. Well, my dad helps your dad keep your dad's car running right, and that's his door. CarQuest, preferred by professional automotive technicians. The Penn State Nittany Lions improved their record to 3-0 with a 22-point win over the Vanderbilt Commodores today. Vanderbilt suffering their first loss in three tries this year. And it was done with shooting. The Nittany Lions had an outstanding day from a shooting standpoint. And our play of the game would be uh, something that typified that. Shooting of freshman Pete Lasicki, who had a marvelous day behind the three-point line. You see him coming behind a pick from John Amici there and canning an NBA three-pointer. And that shot really blew it open for Penn State today. That Vanderbilt called the timeout right after that play. The crowd really got into the game, and uh, Pete Lasicki gave a huge lift in the first half, and that play really turned it around for Penn State. Lasicki off the bench to score 14 points on the day as a freshman. Glenn Secunda led the way with the Nittany Lions with 26 points, and John Amici had 21 points on the day also for Penn State. They had very balanced scoring, and they played very well offensively today. We'll have some final thoughts from Rec Hall when we return in just a moment. When we asked two-time Indy winner Emerson Fittipaldi to be involved in the development of the Chrysler Cirrus, it wasn't to have him help sell the car. It was to have him help refine it. He pushed it to the limits around the track. He made suggestions. The engineers listened. The engineers made suggestions, and he listened. The result of this collaboration is a specially modified double wishbone suspension system unlike any other on the road today. The Chrysler Cirrus. It's not just a step above, it's the new plateau. Raycom, we deliver football. Raycom, we deliver basketball. Raycom. The one company that delivers sizzling coverage of both football and basketball, plus a whole lot more, including exciting home video titles. Raycon, we deliver. Well, you see the final score of the Penn State Nittany Lions with a surprising 22-point win today over the Vanderbilt Commodores. Frank Gardenia and Barry Booker with you. And Barry, when you're in the coaching situation, you're Coach Parkville of Penn State, Coach Van Bredekoff of Vanderbilt. What do you take from this one today? Well, for Penn State, this is a huge lift. You got everybody some playing time, a very balanced attack. Everyone was effective today. So this is a huge lift for Penn State that they can take and carry on throughout this season. For Vanderbilt, a very disappointing loss, but you gotta just turn around and get ready to play a very good Virginia team on Tuesday night. So uh, that may help them having to get ready and play again quickly. So the Nittany Lions uh, win at home and gain their first win in this uh, brief series with the Vanderbilt Commodores. Vanderbilt had won the first two meetings between the two schools, Penn State with its first win in their history over the Commodores. This uh, broadcast has been a copyrighted presentation of the Big Ten Incorporated. We thank you very much for being with us today. Hope you enjoyed the game. For Barry Booker, this is Frank Gardenia saying so long from Rec Hall.